Hello, good morning. Okay, so welcome to my uh, bunch of videos, lecture videos, and today we're going to start on some microbiology series. And uh, so today we're going to do bacteria, and um, later on we'll, we'll do viruses and the other ones. Uh, so I think for today we're just going to generally look generally into bacteria. Uh, you have to know that bacteria is a very, bacteriology is a very very wide field but now today we're just going to focus on some general aspects okay so hope you get something out of it and it helps you to um, understand better in your further reading so bacteria we're going to look at, at it as a generally but just going to define certain terms in bacteriology and then we're going to look at the structure characteristics classification and then pathogenesis okay so definition that you're going to focus on is um what basically bacteriology is and you're not just going to do any bacteriology but medical bacteriology because we have so many bacteria that um, are medically significant and others which are not so we cannot pretend to actually do or look at every 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 classification or every types of bacteria so we're just going to focus on uh, the ones that are medically relevant but anyway by definition bacteriology is simply the study of bacteria so bacteria bacteria that is the organism and then logos which is logy here this part uh, simply means the study of so what as i said what we're going to focus on is medical bacteriology which is basically the scientific study of medically relevant bacteria, not just any bacteria, the one that uh, would cause diseases to human beings. Okay, so the general characteristics that you're going to look at in terms of bacteria is that uh, bacteria are basically prokaryotic, okay, they're prokaryotic in nature um, as opposed to eukaryotes okay i hope by now in, in in your cell biology you already know what a prokaryote cell is and what a eukaryote uh, cell is so bacteria is typically prokaryotic and then it contains both dna and rna okay this is important to know uh, because later on we'll look at viruses and we'll see it contains one of them so it contains both deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid. Uh, then it, it, the growth of bacteria can happen even in artificial media. Okay, so this is important. Okay, not all of them, but most of them. This is important because now we can get a sample of, for example, um, blood or sputum from a human being that is infected with some bacterial infection, and then we put a uh, that sample in a blood agar, so in, a, in an artificial media, like an agar plate with um, some nutrients, and then it can be grown artificially. So it can be grown outside the human body. So this is important again, as you can see, it's different from a virus, which is basically an obligate intracellular organism. So this one requires an artificial medium. It can grow in an artificial medium. Uh, that's an important concept that. Uh, especially helps in diagnostics when people when they do culture and sensitivity they can grow it to call culture so uh, in terms of reproduction bacteria replicates by binary fission okay? simply like division okay it's divide so binary fission and um, this is also an important type of reproduction which enables bacteria to grow very fast okay basically we look at the how fast it grows but better efficient is one of the different ways that bacteria can um, replicate so almost contains almost all of them contain a rigid cellule yeah we say almost because not all of them um, we have a different classification of bacteria called mycoplasmas but those ones do not have a cell on them as you can see later on a cell is very important especially for uh, also diagnostics 
uh, and also in treatment therapies. So like diagnostics, there's some cell walls that are thick. They have a thick peptidoglycan layer. Others have a thin one, which enables us to know which type of bacteria it is. Then in therapies, some of the drugs, antibiotics or antimicrobial agents, antibacterial agents, they focus on certain areas of the cell wall. So they have a cell wall and also they're sensitive to antimicrobial agents. Okay. However, with the ad advent of um, antimicrobial resistance, there's some bacteria that will be resistant or not sensitive to some microbial agents. Okay. But in generally, this is the, these are the features that we'll have in bacteria. So if we look basically the structure, we can basically generally split them into three levels. So we can have a, a layer which we call, which has the cell wall and the cell membrane, okay, which we call cell envelope proper. So this is composed of cell wall and then underneath the cell wall, we usually have the cell membrane. Then we have things that are inside the cell, okay? So that is inside the cell, within the cell membrane or inside the cell so we have um, elements like mesosomes which are very important we look at their features and what they do ribosomes very important for uh, synthesis process this nucleoid and cytoplasmic granules all these are very important cellular elements okay um then on top of the cell envelope we usually have an external cell envelope, cellular elements on top of that, okay? So we can have a flagella, very important, especially for locomotion, pili, very good for attachment, glycocalyx. I think it adds more protection, it can also be used to, glycocalyx can be like, uh, they can act as target receptors for like, if you have immunoglobulin, so, immunological uh, cells that are trying to come and kill the bacteria. Also glycocalyx helps in the formation of the capsule. Okay, so all that. Glycocalyx can have a variety of um, uh, functions. So basically, the bacterial structure is here. The image I hope is very clear, even if not very, but anyway, if we start with the inside content, so you see you can have this is a genetic material this is a dna called into a nucleoid and then as you notice and this is one of the features of the prokaryotic cells this genetic material is not enclosed within a nucleus membrane okay it's not membrane bound so that is one of the features of prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic will have some membrane around the around the nuclear materials. Then we have like a cytoplasmic infusion, uh, inclusions. We have the cytoplasm itself here, which usually has content of food or nutri nutrients. And then um, if you can see, these are ribosomes, very important. This is, you can see uh, these are a folding, eh? and this is very important. Uh, mesosomes are usually very important also. And then on top of that layer, we have now the cell membrane, okay? We have a cell membrane, then we have a cell wall on top. So this is a cell wall, and then this is the cell membrane, okay? So we have a cell wall and cell membrane. And then on top of that is where we have now, uh, we have a capsule. A capsule is a form of um, glycocalyx. We can either have a very, very adherent, very strong structure of a glycocalyx, which now we call a capsule, or we can have um, a very slimy, loose glycocalyx, which we call a slime. Okay, so um, that's the uppermost layer. And again, not all of them have uh, the capsules and all those things. Um, then we have a pili, and we say pili is very important for attachment. And then we have flagellum, okay? These are for, they do a propelling motion and then moves the bacteria. However, by the way, some bacteria do not have flagellum. 
they move by other means. Some these are external flagellas, by the way. Some have internal flagella. Okay, weird, you know. So the movement is propagated from within. Okay, so I think this is much more clearer. So we can have the flagella outside here. You can see a capsule. It's a capsule. Uh, this I talked about mesosomes. Mesosomes are very important, especially like for cell division. Uh, the cell division we talk about is like uh, when they're doing binary fusion, and also when they want to do things like um, some endocytosis, okay, or engulfing of some components. You can see it makes a vacuum, and then the thing can pass to the cavity. Uh, so we have the plasma membrane, is the cell membrane. Uh, we have the genetic material, the DNA, the ribosomes, okay? Basically, it's the these structures we're talking about. The contents, um, the cell wall and the cell membrane. And then we have uh, the outer, so it's in the capsule, in this case, flagella, we have pillar is not shown here. Okay, so the bacteria cell wall is very rigid, okay? Rigid, it has to be rigid, so it, and the rigidity comes from um, the, the way it is made. It's a, like a mesh formation, which is uh, made up of a peptidoglycan layer. So the main function of this is to provide the shape, okay, and the rigidity, which now gives it protection from the environment. Remember, talk about the environment, it can be the external environment or other cells or fluids within the body, all those things. Uh, uh, antigens, all those, and then provide steady. So we have um, standing characteristics to the bacterium, okay? And, and this is what I was talking about when I was saying, um, based on which type of how thick the peptidoglycan layer is, you can be able to differentiate by staining and this staining is called the gram staining and we'll talk much more about it so this is basically what we're talking about so this is this is the cell wall here and it's made up of peptidoglycan layer okay so you see these are like mesh works okay makes it very very strong